War Thunder. I am not releasing this game. Do not take down this video. If Universal takes down this video, then this is canon. Anyway, there it is. I just spent the last two months and thousands of dollars making my dream Jurassic Park game inside of Unreal Engine. It features a fully functional park, all the dinosaur enclosures, and oh yeah, dinosaurs. How'd you do this? And this is exactly how I did it. The first thing I needed, like always, was... Actually, I don't know. I've never made a video game before. In fact, I've only played about five video games in my lifetime. So I took to YouTube and did what I always do when I don't know how to do something. Look up a tutorial. Once I had consumed knowledge, I could start the game. And I now knew the first thing I needed, like always, is a 3D model. Namely, of the park. But the problem is there really isn't a consistent layout of what the park and island look like. Since you know, they don't exist. <laughs> Luckily, I found this map, which seems to be the most accurate layout to what is shown on screen. With this, I opened up Unreal Engine, made a new open world, dropped in the map, and sized it up so we could begin to build the island. First up was the Visitor Center, which I actually began to model ages ago, but it took too long and I never finished. This time around, I instead found a rip of the model from one of the newer games, split it into different parts, ported it in, and combined it all in what's called a blueprint. This will give us more control over what's visible. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. But the problem is that recent games don't allow you to go inside, meaning there's no interior. It would take at least a week to model the entire thing myself, so luckily I found Paul Elder, who's already modeled many of the maps and props from the movie and is obviously a fellow superfan. We arranged a deal, and I got to porting all of his wonderful work into Unreal. I used a plethora of Quixel Mega Scans for the more generic textures, and then AI upscaled the textures that he provided to make everything look extra crispy. I then assembled the interior, cafe, and the kitchen together. However, in case you don't know, the exterior of the visitor center was filmed on location, while the interior was filmed on set, meaning the interior doesn't fit. Which is what brought me to face my greatest enemy, Cody. Because we need to tell the game to have the interior be invisible until you open the doors and enter, and vice versa. So I took to the painstaking process of learning how to code. Not just kidding, because Unreal has what are called blueprints, which allow you to program game logic in a very visual format without having to write your own C++ code. But before that, we had to get the doors working. I scripted some basic logic, which tells the doors to rotate 90 degrees over five seconds when the player hits E then added what's called a collision box, which reverses this action once the player has walked far enough away. I then brought everything together and added another collision box at the entrance, which, once the player overlaps with it, makes the interior visible and hides the outer walls of the exterior, with the switcheroo being hidden by the doorframe. Is this how the pros do it? No clue, but it kind of works. And I then went back in and added physics to the chairs in the cafe so the player can interact with them. With this, we could place the visitor center into our map. But the island is looking a little empty. We needed some jungle assets. And that's when I came across these, which are as beautiful as they are expensive. To make sure I could afford it, I called up my broker, but couldn't get through as he had been arrested in Morocco for trying to buy a goat using chocolate coins. So, while that situation got resolved, I needed to kill some time, and there was no better option than to download the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, War Thunder, where you take control of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships to take part in a community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles, and they just released their newest Alpha Strike update, which has new jets, tanks, helicopters, and ships, and they're all ready for you to blow up, as every vehicle has been modeled down to its last detail, meaning every part behaves and looks like the real-life counterpart, unlike chocolate coins. And the best part, you can now play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Just use my link in the description or pinned comment to sign up, and you will receive this huge bonus pack and much more. It's only available for a limited time, so don't wait. Once I got a new broker, he gave me the okay, and I proceeded to first add the landscape material to the island, and we could now begin to make Isla Nublar take shape. 
I started with the arrival point. I got this helipad from Cargo, they sponsored me, dropped it in, then I had to go and enable the built-in water system so we could add the waterfall. I used the landscape sculpting and painting tools to shape the landscape precisely as I needed, trying to match it as closely as possible to the movie. I added rocks, grass, these random ass wooden beams, and voila. And I then painted the path leading to the security gates, which are set up the same way as the other doors, except with no need to press E. They open automatically. Following the movie, we go through this wall of mud leading into the Brachiosaurus swamp. I sculpted a little mountain, added these tall trees, and then added the lake. However, you'll notice the landscape looks a bit too smooth, which is where procedural foliage generation comes in. We set up a volume, then with the click of a button, it generates cliffs, rocks, and trees exactly where needed. And I keep updating it as I make the landscape. Beautiful. We again go through a little path, pass another security gate, and come back to the visitor center, whose layout I kept being unsatisfied with, until I finally found this photo, which gives the best reference available to what the location actually looks like. I dropped it into my scene, scaled it appropriately, and shaped the lake. For the road, I made these two pieces of geometry, which I can then put into a spline and begin constructing the roads, and I then added all the trees and props needed. I quickly modeled the emergency bunker, dropped it off to the side of the visitor center, and next to it goes the Velociraptor pen, which again is from one of the newer games. I upscaled the textures and shaped the environment as needed. In front of this goes the supply bunker, for which I used this 3D print model, textured it, and set it up. Some more fencing from cargo as well as some fallen palm trees completed the scene, and it looks so good like it costs an arm and a leg, or at least an arm. Now, something that is never shown in the movie is the actual hotel for the park, the Safari Lodge. Only concept art for it exists. I would have loved to have modeled it, but trust me, there's a lot more to go, so I instead found these models that look pretty similar. The placement for the lodge is a bit dubious, however, I think adding it in front of the visitor center looks the best. However, not too much is known about it. The only things we know are in the novel, which states that it featured a pool as well as a tennis court, so I made sure to include both. But I really just had to eyeball it based on the concept and fan art. To the right of the visitor center is the iconic gate, which I got off of Turbo Squid. Thank you, Ben Jewel. I set the scene, made them open like the other doors, and I could now begin to construct the park. I began by laying down the road following the map, as well as really shaping the landscape. I made these signs for each dinosaur, and now it was time to add the different dinosaur paddocks. First on the tour is a Dilophosaurus, for which I modeled a new gate, which I could then attach to a spline to keep the spitter inside, and I added the paddock sign. And that brings us to... Go ahead, all of you. We're approaching the Tyrannosaur paddock. That's right, the Tyrannosaur paddock. I found this map which seems to address the cliff that comes out of nowhere. Real fans will understand. Using this as a guide, I first added the 24-foot fence. I then modeled the bathroom and added an interior because when you gotta go, you gotta go. After that, I added the sign and now we needed the tunnel. So I quickly modeled the entrance, added it into my scene, and next I modeled the actual tunnel body and added it back as a spline. I also added some cliffs and voila. The rest was relatively easy as it's just an open field for the herbivores to roam around in. Next up were the cars, since otherwise it would take a while to traverse the park by foot. Just ask these guys. Paul Elder provided the Jeep, and I purchased this model of the Ford Explorer and added Paul's interior. I rigged them up and made a vehicle blueprint which allows me to make the cars drivable. At first I thought a third person view would be better, but I changed it up to a first person view. I don't know, which do you prefer? I added some sounds, and with this the park was ready to open. But there is something missing. Uh, now, now eventually you do might have dinosaurs on your on your dinosaur tour, right? Hello? Malcolm is right, so let's get to making those dinosaurs, namely seven species. Unfortunately, we can't just drop them into the scene because this is all they would do. So, how are we actually going to get these dinosaurs to behave and attack as they should? Well, for that, I got this plugin, which does a lot of the grunt work for us. All we need is our model and some animations. I wanted to start with none other than our queen of the dinosaurs, Rexy. 
Luckily, because I do this for a living, I've already made a model of her. To speed things up, I got this pack and was able to remap the animations included to my own model. I then brought everything into Unreal and made what's called an animation blueprint, which consists of some basic logic to tell the model how and when to move. I could then bring everything into the enemy AI, where I set up the animations, speed of walking, running, etc. And now we simply drop this into our level, and voila, we have a team. Say again. <laughs> we have a T-Rex. Uh. That's one down, six to go. I made a new Brachiosaurus in Gallimimus, altered the Triceratops and Perceralophus models I bought to match their on-screen counterparts, say that bite them fast, I used my old Zophosaurus and made a brand new Velociraptor because I was unhappy with my old one. I applied pre-existing animations to all of them except for the Velociraptor, for whom I made new ones by hand. Their AI is the same as the T-Rex's, but I made the herbivores' eyesight a lot shallower so they won't attack the players so often as well as making them flee right away after being attacked, because they're cowards. Now a note, I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to make me turn correctly. Again, I'm not a professional. I watched countless hours of tutorials and nothing worked. So let's just ignore that they turn as if they're on a hoverboard. But with this we had our dinosaurs, which we could start dropping into our level. But we can't end it here, because I actually want to make a playable experience meaning we need weapons. I'm using this first-person template, which again does the grunt work for us, so I can focus on making this look good as opposed to banging my head on the wall. I got a pistol and an M4, but I made sure to include none other than the coolest shotgun of all time. So sick. However, it just comes with a stock Unreal Engine 4 mannequin, which I don't think will fit into 1993 Jurassic Park. But if not this entity, exactly who is our character going to be? Well, after careful consideration, I decided I wanted this game to be nothing else than a power fantasy for Dr. Alan Grant, as a way to help him deal with his trauma. So I took to Blender and started sculpting. Once I had Sam Neill's likeness, I could begin to sculpt his body, which I just beefed up. Once I had this base mesh, I bought this realistic human and then wrapped it to my sculpt so I could transfer over all the textures. I gave him some clothes, obviously ripped off his sleeves, rigged him up to the same rig, and I then ported him back into Unreal. Luckily, it being first person means we don't need to do any facial rigging. And voila, Dr. Anabolic Grant. Buy the shirt. Out of the box, it didn't include a death screen, so when you die, you kind of just fall? So I quickly drafted up this very simple Minecraft-esque death screen, which you can then add buttons to and route them to restart the level or go to the main menu, which we don't have yet. Which brings us to our next step, the menu. You have to give it its own gameplay level and then add in a widget blueprint, which is where I'm able to bring in textures and buttons to design it. And now it was time for some finishing touches. I added some more sound and with this, we have Jurassic Park. But just like John Hammond, I'm going to need an expert to sign off on my park, which is where my good friend Corey comes in. So I packaged the game, sent it over, and now, without further ado, welcome to Jurassic Park. What, bro? <laughs> this is so sick! Thank you, thank you. Do I got a chopper? Yeah, I do a chopper. This is my ADD kicking in right here, bro. I'm like already <laughs> just ready to fly the chopper. <laughs> press E. Oh, press E? Yeah. Yo! This is already so sick, but I, I can't wait for the dinosaur. Is this the Stegosaurus? Brachiosaurus. Which way? Oh, yo, there it is. what? Yeah, there it is. Oh my gosh, dude. Look at... What, bro? <gasps> no way, bro. Can I ride a dinosaur? I'm trying to see one of those... Uh... Are they called raptors? Oh, bro, I'm a box of raptor, bro. I'm gonna <laughs> smack it in his face. Oh my gosh, bro! What? This is literally like the movie. Yeah. And you should Guys. pick up those guns, yeah. Oh. Desert, bro, a deagle? The classic. Oh my, the Spaz 12! That was my favorite gun in Call of Duty, bro. <laughs> and just go a bit further. There you <gasps> go. Oh my gosh, bro. Explored a bit. This is so cool. I, I love the attention to detail. 
All right, bro. I feel like we're getting to this point where there was a raptor at this scene in the movie. Oh, that's red. Oh, <gasps> here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, the raptor pen, bro. I'm about to get the crap scared out of me. Yeah, I would run, dude. Wait, where is it? <laughs> Turn around. I don't know. Oh my gosh, bro. What? You can shoot. You can shoot. You can shoot. Is there more than one of them? Yeah, I do. There's three. Ah. Oh my gosh. No. No, yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want the smoke. <laughs> no way. She's after you, bro. There oh it is. my gosh. Oh, it's right there. Oh my gosh. There you go. Okay. Oh yeah, boy. Y'all ain't got nothing for cool now, boy. Yo, hold on. What DVD is that? Oh, wait, what the? <gasps> Yo, wait, we haven't even made it there yet. We did uh, helicopters and Jeeps and Raptors and Brachiosauruses. This is like super sick. Get out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, get out. Run, 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 run. Where? Dude, you're the one. You told me to get out and now I'm about to die. Wait, that thing? Yeah, that thing. The, the Rapasaurus. What's up, boy? Those teeth would literally just rip you to shreds. Oh, there's a Triceratops. Holy crap. Look, yo, that was sick. Hello, Spragosaurus. What is it called? Gallimimus. Gallimimus. Galimus. I'm gonna call it Galimus. They don't look friendly at all, bro. It might attack you, but it's got grandma's gums. It's not, you're, you're fine. All right, so the question everybody wants to know, can an M16 take out a Triceratoperoni? What's up, boy? <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah, well, oh. oh, that was easy, bro. Imagine that thing stabs you. No feeding, flash photography, or yelling. Bro, I'm not ready for this. Where's this big thing at? Oh my gosh, bro. Yo! Go, you stupid car! <laughs> what is wrong with this thing? Oh my gosh! My dude is fast! Oh, my, how fast does the T-Rex run? Come on, baby. Oh, there we- Oh, 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 almost. Oh! Oh, they're fighting each other! Gosh dang, he's eating them. This was freaking sick, all right? And that was my dream Jurassic Park game. Again, I'm not releasing it, sorry guys. And make sure to click my link down below to check out War Thunder for free, which is now available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. New and returning players who have been away for six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and in-game currency and much more, so don't wait. And check out Jurassic Park Survival when that comes out. But let me know what you thought about my game, buy their shirts, and okay guys, I'll see you later. Subscribe.